Okay, uh, Dr. Umar, thank you for coming. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, may Allah allow us to benefit uh, from your experience, your knowledge, your insight. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, use you more and more in your works for his uh, deen, for his Islam. Amin, amin. So uh, we would like to continue today uh, on the subject of, uh, of education and knowledge, uh, as we had talked about last time, but maybe expand upon different, I guess, branches of this whole issue of brainwashing and education. And uh, so you wanted to talk about, I guess, um, the allegory of knowledge in terms of food. Yes. I find that very interesting. Yes. Um... The idea here is that of knowing, okay? Um, if you have, uh, there's a difference between data and then knowing or understanding uh, the data uh, or knowing the subject, okay? And it's like the difference between, um, I don't know, reading a phone book, that's just data, you see? but understanding the demographics and the city and the environment that represents the people in that particular phone book is the real knowledge, you see. Mm. So there, there's, a, there, there's a peculiar Southeast Asian uh, term that has to deal with uh, sex uh, between uh, uh, married partners and non-married partners as well, but it's, uh, let's re refer to it in terms of married partners, uh, ideally, and that when, that is when some, one of the spouses is hungry uh, for the sexual act, they say, I'm hungry, I want to eat you, and um, this is not a far-fetched uh, or gross uh, metaphor, it's it's a real uh, 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 experience because it's part of the in intimacy that Allah wants to have with us. It is represented in the marital act in the sexual congress, but the sexual congress itself, that unification, is not just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing continuum, and this ongoing continuum that... Um, Everybody likes the idea of having a titillating intimate time, but the ongoing continuum of that titillating intimate time, which brings us joy and peace and some relief from our trials, um, is one that demands that we also have communications with each other. And this communication is a, uh, uh, is a process of knowing the other, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, in the act of uh, the sex, when the, the woman comes to climax, there's a certain physiological reaction that occurs. And it uh, causes uh, the secretion of hormones in the brain that uh, uh, oxytocin and prolactin in particular, that cause her to bond with her partner. She is compelled to bond with that partner emotionally, whether or not she really loves him it's mm. it's 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 a it's a thing that allah has built into uh the system and this bonding is part of that's, her that that's a very important point you just mentioned subhanallah mm. i mean i knew it maybe somewhere in the back of my head but you'd kind of like just there's a difference between love and bonding mm -hmm. in a sense, right? Yes, yes. You, know, you, you can you can bond with somebody even that's toxic. And yes, you can. And that happens. You, you don't even, yeah. That happens. That happens. You, know, you know, you have beauty in the beast, she bonds with the beast. Uh, and and technically, technically, uh, typically, uh, she wants she loves the beast because she thinks the beast is going to protect her. Well, that beast will protect her if the nafs is redeemed, you see, and the nafs is redeemed only by an ongoing knowledge basis that requires communication with the divine aspect 
uh, of uh, what it is that spiritually overcomes the nafs, you see. So the woman is more dependent upon the, the man here because the man doesn't become uh, 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 compelled to bond in that sense. The man is compelled to bond physically more than anything else. But the, um, the uh, requirements for the ongoing reciprocity on the part of the woman to provide him with what it is that he desires in a joyful manner, you see, this requires that he takes responsibility, mm. you see, for her well-being. And this mm. requires that he learns who she is. And he can only learn who she is by studying, okay, both the female character and who his particular female happens to be. And he mm. can only do that if he communicates with her. So there has mm. to be an ongoing narrative, an ongoing um, uh, uh, dialogue, you see. Mm. And this is a process of coming to know each other. And this is also scriptural. It, you, you see it in the, um, in the Old Testament in particular. And uh, Adam knew Eve, and she conceived a son. Well, mm. you know, you don't necessarily conceive the first time you have a sexual intercourse, you see. Uh, so, and Abraham knew Sarah and so forth and so on. And Isaac was comforted in the, after the death of his mother and all of this sort of thing. But this is the, the, the act of sex is, and marriage is connected with the act of knowing in the scripture. You see, and uh, this is the uh, the, the Torah. Oh, interesting, you see? interesting, very interesting point. So, yeah. what you're saying, which is another golden gem, mm -hmm. uh, that is, you're saying that it starts with sex, but it has an emotional. You can say that's where the calmness comes, or the family. You can say the function of the family is come because it's all an extension of that emotional attachment yes. right you kind of like said yes. that in the beginning. yes and it, it, it can't be maintained the joy of sex cannot be maintained without taking responsibility for the well-being of the partners so and that's it, interesting because the word nikah means intimacy hmm. it means what intimacy like yeah. the, the the word nikah literally hmm. means to have intimacy with your wife so yeah like even in this in the sharia you can say that's the starting point no, right. sex is just a starting point. You know, and, and actually, it starts before that because there's an affection. I mean, the Quran is very clear about it. You know, we established, the Lord has, uh, God has established affection between us in, in this bonding. And uh, the sexual unit, the sexual union, the sexual desire is part of that. But it, what, what's the purpose? The purpose is to come to know each other in the same way that Allah wants us to know him in an intimate fashion. And that mm -hmm. is what Rumi has talked about, you see. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, when I'm referring to knowledge, I'm referring to knowledge in an intimate way. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing to have a rote memory of something. It's quite another to have such knowledge and such command of a knowledge and such command of knowing that you can write a novel about the subject or write an essay, a, an essay that actually has uh, what we call meat in it, you see. Mm. And this gets back to the idea of eating knowledge, mm. you see. So when you are eating your spouse, you are becoming unified with that person and not just uh, not just in a uh, physical sense but in a metaphysical sense as well so mm -hmm. there's a this is knowing that that comes about and that knowing uh, becomes a, a sphere and it's an ever expanding sphere okay mm -hmm. if it is not reduced if it is not destroyed <coughs> by chauvinism okay so um and knowledge in any basis can always be re reflected in, in any realm, in knowledge in any realm can always be reflected by the marital union. Matter of fact, the marital union is an archetype for all uh, social discourse and all discourse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
because mm. Allah demands intimacy. Mm. Remember, he says, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. Well, mm. if Allah is closer to me than my jugular vein, uh, I, I, sh I, I have to, if I know that, and then I act like he's out there someplace, you know, in the great cosmos, minding his business instead of just mine. And I'm thinking, well, okay, well, if he's out there and I'm here, um, then I can sin and go to uh, Juma on Friday and get absolution. And, you know, that's kind of okay. So what you're doing, though, is you're, you're denying the fact that Allah is closer to you <laughs> than your mm. jugular vein, um, which is the same as denying that your wife has a need, an emotional need that you're not meeting. You see, so you cut yourself off from her affection and you cut yourself off from Allah's affection as well. You see, mm. so the, it's the, the, the relationship is the same. I mm. mean, the metaphor is the same. It, so the more intimate you are with your spouse, then the more intimate you can be also become with Allah. And the, the problem is that there are men uh, who become intimate with some spirit and believe me, it's not Allah and they think it's Allah. Yeah. And they're so intimate with this other spirit that they have no time for their wife or their family. Yeah. I'm sure you know such men. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, and you know, they're always going about, they're, they're always busy at the mosque or, you know, they're always doing something that has to be done outside the home mm. and they're never home. And when mm. they do come home, it's just time for eat and sex and then sleep and then off they go again. Mm. You see, and if you interfere with their cycle of uh, existence and you, sub and you confront them with the fact that they don't know what's going on, they have no knowledge, okay, they get angry mm. and then they get abusive, you yeah. see. And oh, I thought just, everything is fine. I thought everything is fine. She has nothing yeah, to complain yeah, about. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you've heard this before. Okay, so <clears throat> this thing of knowing, this thing of eating knowledge, of eating uh, the other person that you call your closest companion, your spouse is your closest neighbor. Okay, and in, in the marriage, you have the close the best opportunity to perform your good deeds it's not outside the marriage you got to do, complete the dean in the home before you take it to the street yeah. i mean your spouse is 25 percent. you're 25 percent. you put that together you got 50 percent of the dean now take it out to the street and, and then you know when when that's done then when you take it to the street together then everyone who sees you walking down the street with your happy wife will say hey they got the dean, man. They're mm. doing the dean. They're walking the dean. Mm. There's no question about happily, happily married people. Okay. Mm. Everyone knows. Mm. And, you know, it's a source of great envy and contention with yeah. some people because they can't have it for whatever reason. And everybody wants it, you see, because we're designed to have it. So we're designed to have this knowledge basis. You see, we're designed to eat each other and become each other. And I want to take that idea uh, a step further now, because it has to do with transubstantiation. And transubstantiation is uh, something that is a reality. And, uh, you know, the Catholics, they like to think, well, we take this little piece of cracker and we raise it above the priest's heads, we ring a few bells, and have lit candles and God is transubstantiated into this host and then we eat it and God dwells with us. Well, that's all a bunch of nonsense. I think anybody with a rational mind knows that that's uh, just a stupid infantile way of thinking about things. But hey, millions of people believe it. Hmm. So that shows you how far they are from knowledge. Hmm. <laughs> See? They hmm. don't have the intimacy. That is, yeah. uh, that is really uh, demanded here. They don't have yeah. the knowing. The knowing is what transubstantiates us. Mm. When you know what the other person really and truly needs, then that knowledge becomes part of your being and it becomes such a part of your being that you actually will to do something about it. Mm. You see? So you will to act on the knowing. And this will is selfless. 
This part of the will is selfless. So that is how we begin to overcome. So it's like a positive, that. it's a positive love. It's not like a toxic relationship, right? That's right. I That's guess, right. I guess some right. people have a toxic relationship with Allah too, right? Yes. 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 They're always telling Allah what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, uh, they, you know, the Jews do that. They're, they're manipulating the prophecies. So they're telling God, hey, we got everything ready for you now. Come on, act. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, it, that, that's it you know Allah doesn't work like that and he didn't work like that when I was a Christian he does still doesn't work like that when I'm a Muslim doesn't make any difference you see so um the idea here is to take in the knowledge of whatever it is so that you then what you do something about it you see you don't just it's not just here it actually comes into here and it permeates your whole being mm -hmm. so that it reaches your hand and your feet and then this brings us back to the path mm -hmm. you see that you brought up a couple of uh, videos ago uh the walking and people say well walking the christian like this walking the talk you see uh, so you can't do that without knowledge you have to mm -hmm. know what needs to be done yeah, and, it's not just data, right? It is no, it's not just data. And you, you can't, it's not just a thing of reacting. It's a thing of being, you see. So when, when I eat my wife or she eats me, uh, we become part of each other. Not that we become lost in each other. The boundaries are always there as individual. But we are combined in a unity uh, that's a social unity. And that unity demands cooperation. It demands that we respect each other. It, it demands um, uh, dignity, that we maintain each other's dignity in order for us to act as a social unit so that we can take the dean out of the home, our half of the dean, and then complete it out in the street, out in public, the other half of the dean, you see, because that's, that's the whole purpose of the marriage. There is no uh, dean without the marriage. It doesn't. That's why it's so significant to the prophet. He said, "If you're not married, then, you know, uh, you're not mine. You're not one of so, mine." So, would you say you. then, like, if somebody becomes, and sorry for interrupting, but yes, if you okay, become, if you become like a monk, you go yes. out there in the desert, or you become a, monk, you you know God, but you still don't know the reality of relationships, or you don't know. Well, you think you know God. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean that you know him. You, you've got to, I think you've got to look at somebody like, um, um, uh, well, what's his name? Uh, Jilani, uh, Sheikh Jilani, uh, the, the fellow who wrote this book about the unseen. Uh, I haven't been able to get back to it in uh, about several weeks now. But you see, he went out and he, he did this ascetic thing in the desert. We don't know what he did for 25 years. And he must have learned something of what was um, divine or divine order or, or what was required for the dean. So when he returned to public life, the first thing he did was get married, mm. you see. And, but the first thing that Allah did for him, you see, was make it possible. <laughs> I mean, you just, you don't just walk out of the desert and, and uh, grab a woman like Ali Hoop and knock her over the head and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this thing now. No. The first thing Quran mentions about Adam is that, you know, his wife. Uh -huh. And so it's that significant meaning. Yeah, it's very, it's very significant. There is no Dean. There is no relationship with Allah without the woman. You see, uh, I mean, in, in the Genesis, it's when you're talking about Adam and after, immediately after the creation, Allah said, hmm, it's not good for him to be alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and then, as I said before, he took woman out of Adam, not out of the earth. Okay, so it was a creation removed from the original substance. So mm -hmm. the substance that was already transubstantiated into Adam's body was then, and being was then used, you see, mm -hmm. to, to, to form Eve. And then this, this means a certain kind of dependence, but it's also an interdependence, 
you see. So our individual relationship with Allah depends on this interdependence, you see. And the interdependence has to be maintained with serenity, with asakina, only by knowledge, mm -hmm. only by knowing the other, you see. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, this is very, very important. So there's got to be communication, there has to be study, there has to be, you know, the guy scratching his head and, you know, I don't understand my wife. Uh, and then he's got to go talk to somebody like me and he's and I say, you know, what does she mean when she does this? And I say, you know, I'm not quite sure. I don't understand my wife either, but I think, <laughs> okay, it's like this. Okay, so us guys, we got to get together and help each other figure them out because they're different than we are. Mm -hmm. Their whole approach to relationship is, is different than our approach to relationship. And we, we can't, we can't uh, foster, we can't put off on them what we expect from other men, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a mistake. And they can't put on us what they expect from other women because we're so different. So this requires <laughs> that both husband and wife talk all right to as many people as possible and say i don't understand what my wife or i don't understand what my husband just did can you help me understand okay mm. that's a process of knowing that's a process of eating knowledge why because they have a problem they want to solve it mm. okay now we're here on the earth and we got a problem and it needs a solution and that the problem is how do we get back to God? Yeah. Okay. And so, and then how do we uh, maintain this on a con continuum? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have the path, we have Islam, we have the, uh, uh, the right direction. Okay. But something's wrong, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you look around the Ummah and gosh, there's so many unhappy unhappily married people what what's going on hmm. you see this means they're not getting the right kind of knowledge about each other hmm. and if they can't get the right kind of knowledge about each other they certainly can't get the right kind of knowledge on an intimate basis with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because very, it's, it's very it's a, and so the the ummah is 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 kind of you know beating a path in in a circle they're they're kind of you know uh, whipping themselves like uh, you know it's mad Shia on Ashura day you know and, and they're walking around and the they thinking they got that you know but they don't have it they, they got all the ritual they got all the words they memorized the words they got the data but the knowledge the knowing of Allah and the kingdom and divine order has not penetrated them it has not transubstantiated and become in, the dean. In Islamic the dean. mysticism, they use three words. Uh, uh, they say, ilmul yaqeen, aynul yaqeen, haqqul yaqeen. So there's like one thing I know about North Pole. And then that's like knowledge of certainty. And then like, aynul yaqeen, I flew over the North Pole. So I've actually been there. Mm -hmm. And then you live in the North Pole, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of what you're talking about. Yeah. And the other is that even if you're doing 100 prayers and you're very nice to the outside world, but if you can't be nice to your wife or can't build a relationship with her, then you have to really question what my relationship is with Allah, right? And that's correct. Like a bad marriage, whether it be male or female, because sometimes it's because of the female, sometimes. Of course. Because, you know, and so if the, if the, if it, then if they're in a bad marriage and they have to really ask, okay, if this is a bad marriage, then maybe I don't, I don't have the knowing of what a relationship is to even That's have. Right. A we, don't have the the knowing. You know, we don't have like the knowing. We don't have the knowing. The husband says, I do, I pay, I pay all the bills and earn, she should be happy. Right. Yeah. So he's like, I'm praying five times a day. I'm doing this. God should be happy, but yeah. there's no yeah. relationship. No, no, not without relationship. Without relationship, there's, there's no joy. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I noticed about the, um, uh, the, the Muslim community. I mean, had it been for the Muslim community I, and the, the way that the, the Muslim community I found in Malaysia, I never would have become a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But it was because I, I read the Quran and the Quran is unimpeachable. It's, 
it's so beautiful, you, you, it cannot be denied. And uh, mm. knowing what I knew, you see, uh, before reading the Quran, I was just, well, I was convinced, convicted. But if it was up to the Muslim example that I met, I never would have become a Muslim. Mm. Matter of fact, I couldn't get away, I couldn't wait to get away from them. All right, because they were, I, I, because they were so unjoyful. There was, mm. there was so much unhappiness, so, so little joy, so few smiles, so, 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 so uh, mm, sparse, sparse, uh, genuine relationships with mm. meaningful purposes. Everything mm. was superficial and icky mm. with sweetness, you know. So, um, what you're, you, what you're, what you're discussing. And what we're discussing here is a, a knowledge gap, okay? And this, and now you, and you raised a, another issue here with the North Pole. Flying over the North Pole is not the same as living with the Eskimos and the reindeer, mm -hmm. okay? So you could drop out of the plane, go down to the snow, build yourself an igloo, live mm -hmm. with those people, live with the reindeer, okay? and or the seals and walruses and whatever else you, you got there, then you have a new aspect of knowledge. You have knowledge that's from experience. Yeah. Now, if you're and living- it's not the just, same as a book knowledge. It's not the same, no, not at all. So uh, Muslims have a lot of book knowledge, but they don't have the knowledge of the joyful living, mm -hmm. you see. It's, it's not there, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pro forma joy, but it's the genuine joy is not there. I, I just asked my good wife the other day, I said, how many happy Muslim wives do you know? And she said, none. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Mashallah, mashallah. I mean, what, she, I, I was just, because I'm dwelling on this subject, I'm just finishing up the book <laughs> on sexology. And we're talking about knowledge last week and I'm thinking of contemplating these things. And I said, well, there's a knowledge gap here. And the lack of joy is the lack of knowing what leads to joy and what really brings it, you see. And then not only what really brings it, but keeps it, holds it, mm. you see. Uh, you know, it's like digging for the gold. You, 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 you can find out where it is, but you've got to dig it out. You've got to, you've got to bring it to the surface and you've got to make it into something that's useful, you see. Mm. Then you've got to keep it. Okay, how are you going to do that? You get, all of this requires knowledge and work, mm. the right kind of work. And so that's and that and that's education, but that's also the dean. You see. Mm. So what I'm talking about here is the kind of knowledge that becomes you. So that this it, it's not it's not a thing of just knowing the data. It's a thing of living the knowledge. Mm making the data meaningful and then living it, you see. And so that's what I mean uh, when I say, well, something like eating the knowledge, because the knowledge, you see, the, 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 I'm sorry, sorry. The, the miracle that happens every day is I can eat a bowl of porridge in the morning, and that becomes my flesh and blood by the end of the day, mm. you see. Now that's real transubstantiation. Mm. When you eat knowledge so that you understand it, you see, it becomes part of what you can do. Mm. So that if there's a problem, you then can solve it. So it becomes part of your ability. It, it increases your ability to act on the gifts that Allah has already given you. My so Sheikh used to say, let the Quran possess you. Yes, yes. And it's, other times you would say, just hammer the Quran into you. Keep, keep hammering it into you. So I, that's partly, I mean, what you're trying to say is that you become it. Yeah, you become, you become the thing, you see. And so it, it becomes you so that the whole thing is relevant. You see, it's mm. not just something you talk about. It's something you do. Mm. It's something you become. Oh, I'm becoming the Quran. I'm becoming Allah's companion. I'm becoming Allah's slave. I'm becoming, I'm becoming, I'm becoming. I'm not just sitting here reciting dikir. 
and mm -hmm. hoping that Allah is going to like it. No, that's that's not the right idea. The right idea is to recite the thing and then do it. Mm. We we had it when I was do, when I was doing medical training. We were learning certain surgical procedures. The surgeon would then show us how to do one thing. He said, "Okay, here we have a rule here. You see one, then you do one. Mm. You see, and then after you do one, then you do another, then you do another, then you do another, and each time you do another, you're improving your skills. It's like." Mm practicing the piano, practicing basketball. Every time you're doing it, you're training your body, you're gaining knowledge, your body is gaining knowledge because your body has a right to this knowledge too. You have to train the body just like you train an animal, mm. okay? It has to respond, the body has to respond when you want it to respond, when you mm. will it to respond, and mm. you have to be able to will the right things. That brings us to another point here. We want to transubstantiate the knowledge of God and the deen, and what it, the deen, by, by the deen, what we mean is what Allah wants us to do, mm. you see, to please him, not just to please ourselves, but to please him. So if you lay back and you're ignorant, uh, then you have a problem, you see, because you can't do your best because the, the Quran is constantly saying, well, if you're going to be all the slave, you've got to be a good one. you got to be the best of the best. Okay. It's, it's no good, you know, uh, serving Allah and, you know, standing on the corner begging for food. That's certainly not the best of the best. That shows that, you know, something's wrong. Okay. Mm. It's not just a sign of oppression. Okay. It's usually a sign that somewhere along the line, the little bit that you had, was taken away from you because you didn't act on it. Mm. Okay. I've been in that position before where Allah tested me on several occasions, took everything I had away and then restored it to me. Mm. I've been there. Okay. Mm. So it's not just because, you know, men who are in that position constantly, they're there because they, they, they're just lazy or they lack the knowledge or the skill or the ability or the will mm. to help mm. themselves out of it. So what I'm trying to say here is, is that if you remain ignorant of what to do, and what I, what, I'm say, what I mean by what to do is how to be Allah's slave, and to be Allah's slave doesn't mean just to pray five times a day. The, to be Allah's slave means to solve problems that people have in the street. Mm. But first you solve problems that you have in your home, mm. okay? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're ignorant, you're too ignorant to solve those problems at home. In other words, you're just a typical chauvinist guy comes home, you make the money, you throw it on the table, she goes shopping and there's no communication and da 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 da. And why is she pissed off at me? I, you know, but there's no communication. You're not, you're not giving her the honor and the respect that she demands that Allah demands, you know, it's not just that she demands it. If she's demanding it, it's because it's her right. Mm. Okay. As your closest companion. Okay. One, now, one thing that came to my mind, you know, how you were talking about not being able to understand the other gender, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's like the first step. Like there's no way to understand Allah, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> so there you step go. One is like <laughs> deal with your wife. <laughs> then, yeah. You know, there's a mystery in that, that it's hard to tell, okay, what's going on. So now with Allah, the same thing. Yeah, because it, it, men and women don't think the same way. When a woman says something, a man think is, is thinking something completely different. And there's a miscommunication mm -hmm. almost continually because they, we, you may understand the words, but the intention is something different. You know, it's kind of like, uh, well, you know, okay. Um, your honors, uh, I don't know why I'm here. And madam, why have you brought your husband to court today? Well, he doesn't understand me. Hmm. And I, I can say, why don't you understand my wife? I said, well, uh, uh, mister, well, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what she means hmm. because she doesn't tell me. Hmm. 
Madam, do you tell him what you mean? He should know what I mean. <laughs> you see, and this, this sort of thing, this goes on a continuum. And so you've got to overcome that. You've got to solve it. And it seems like there's no solution for it other than mercy mm. and then forgiveness mm. and then affection mm. and then intimacy. And then oh, what, what is this? We're, we're constantly going in the circle where we're constantly uh, offending each other. And then we're constantly returning to each other in mm. um, uh, some form of tauba. That's so interesting, subhanAllah. You see, and if you're not doing that, then you're not performing the same sort of thing that you're, because you're having the same problem with Allah. And Allah's kind of saying there, his arms folded and say, that's not what I meant. Mm. No, you should know what I mean. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Find out, study, learn. Oh, you don't know what came before. Well, mm. it's there. I told the Jews. It's there. Oh, 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 you don't let them study that book, do you? Then how are they going to understand the Quran? The Quran says it's a, a mercy to explain what came before, to complete it. Yeah. How do you know what's completed? All right. I'm not going to tell you. I already did. You didn't listen. You didn't hear me. You didn't study. You didn't get the knowledge, mister. Mm. Okay. So... I mean, how many times have you had a boss that got angry with you because he's already gone through the instructions, he's already explained everything in detail, and then you've flopped the job because you didn't read the instructions. Hmm. Okay? The Quran doesn't tell you everything. It tells you to look at what came before. Yeah. Yeah? And so uh, it's, it's kind of like this. I'm just using this as an example, you see. And um, uh, so the, the, the wife, the husband are teaching each other. Oh, well, okay, well, all right, we misunderstood. Let's, let's not make that mistake again. And how are we going to correct this? And how are we going to prevent it from happening uh, the next time? And so you make a game out of it, you see, so that you stop yeah. yourself from getting angry <laughs> before, mm -hmm. uh, before the, you, know, you, you, you start a war. Mm. Then you develop picket lines and you get your guns and, and, and load up the ammunition and ready to shoot each other. You see, that happens all the time. It's mm. common. Don't pretend it doesn't, you see. Mm. And that's what, uh, you know, if a young guy comes to me and says, I don't understand my wife. I said, well, you know, you, you, you and we got something in common. Let's try and work this thing out. Okay. And here how, here's how, what I did with my wife. Maybe you can try it with her. And yours okay so and the the same goes with the women the women they, they're knocking their head i you know i just don't understand this guy we are not supposed to understand him you see he's a man mm. he doesn't think like you mm. oh oh what do you mean he doesn't think like me no he's a, he's a hunter he's a problem solver he's not just you know some romantic lover is going to go get you goo get you goo all the time no <laughs> No, 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 he's not, he's not like that. No, and you've got to give him his man cave time. He's got to have that. He's got, you know, he's got to have that alone time. Oh, mama, I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me before I got married? Well, I, you know, I just didn't think about it, you know, and I was kind of shy because we're kind of shy of talking about these things, aren't we? They don't get talked about. So yeah. this is, now that brings us back to the knowledge gap, you see, but... This knowledge gap reflects the knowledge gap that we have with Allah. Mm. See, so Allah's the same. You know, uh, he's you know he's going to tell his he's going to inform his servant when his servant uh, performs the tauba and says, you know, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry, I did that. Please forgive me. No, I, I really want to solve this problem. Uh, and uh, I want to learn, but I don't know who to learn from, or I don't know which book to read. Can you please help me? I've done this. I've done this. And after I make such doa, everything that I need is handed to me. Hmm. I mean, the books, the teachers, whatever it is that I need, the means, 
to find out how I can get closer to God. Mm. You see? And this includes a wife. Mm. You right, know, so this, you... This, this business about the, the, the prophet's wives and uh, the, the passage there where uh, Allah says, uh, it, it could be that Allah replaces you with women consorts, consorts who are better than you, mm. better than you. You mm. see, that's happened to me. Mm. It has happened to me. Okay, mm. so I, I, you know, what I'm talking about here is a reality and mm. people need to overcome their resistance to this realm of knowledge. And then you, it requires, you know, Sheikh, it, 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 it requires humility, okay? Mm. And a lot of people think I'm, you know, proud or arrogant or something, but I'm not. I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> it's, right, it's, right. Diff it's a difference, you see. When, when I'm talking, it's not out of pride or arrogance or pretension. I'm talking because I'm convinced of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I've ex I, I have not only read about it, I've lived it. Mm. See? So I have the knowledge from two aspects, you see, mm. and it's still coming. The knowledge is still coming to me. And this mm. is knowledge in all kinds of different realms. So mm. coming back to the point of being Allah's slave means to become Allah's friend, you mm. see, because Allah's friend is his best slave. Mm. Now, if you're ignorant and you can't solve the problem with your wife, how are you going to solve the problem with Allah? Yep. And you're ignorant of what came before, or you're ignorant of the astrophysics that's taking place right now, or you're ignorant of the biodynamics of something yeah. like a vaccine. How are you going to write a kutba on this thing? You, you don't know. You don't know what you're talking about, you see. Then you get a whole bunch of guys in the room. They don't know what they're talking about. And they say, oh, well, I've got an opinion here. And I've got an opinion. You get, you know, 20 guys writing an opinion. And then you got an opinion of a bunch of ignoramuses. And they, mm -hmm. and they, they call it, a, they, they make it into a fatwa. They, uh, oh, oh, Jesus, please. Yeah, this is when we need Jesus's help. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so... Um, you know, because uh, that's better than, you know, getting help from Jesus under those circumstances is better than what they're doing. Because mm. there's no way they can, they can be Allah's servant under those circumstances. Mm. It just can't happen. It's mm. going the opposite direction. They're, they're, they've, made, they've allied themselves with the lie. And lie is also a kind of a knowledge, but it's the wrong knowledge. It's mm. a lie. And that's what uh, Iblis brought to Adam and Eve in the garden. He brought them a lie. And he, not only that, he accused Allah of lying. You see? Right. So you, you've got, a, you, you, you've got a, a very serious problem there when you're trying to claim to be Allah's friend and you're talking uh, out of, on a basis that is ignorant. You don't know what you're talking about. Or you don't even know that you don't know what you're talking about. And that's even worse, you see. Yeah. So this problem with knowledge is a big, big... I, I did a special uh, video on this, and I explained it step by step. Uh, and I hope to have those on uh, the internet and available. Um, I, I, I did them all last summer, inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. And I hope to get them all on the internet this coming uh, month, maybe next month, inshallah, we should have the new site, site up and ready so that uh, people can benefit according to your doa from what it is that Allah has placed in me. Uh, so because, over here, just uh, I want to mention that Dr. Sure, Umar, sure. inshallah, will have his website up. And I want everyone that listens to this to be pre-prepared. You know how they say when we do fundraising in the masjid, we say, come with your checks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no. not. We, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. No, no, no. What, what I was going to say is that you uh, that be ready to be have a subscription to his yeah. website. Yeah, That's how we, we, we don't we don't need donations and think that what we're offering a, a, a paywall uh, and we need the subscriptions. 
not not to uh, in, in, enhance our livelihood. We're we're okay as far as you know our daily expenses and everything. But to to promote a website, to keep it running, to solve the problems, and to publish more material, especially to get uh, books uh, ready. Uh, so the, it requires funds, and we don't have enough money to do all of that. Uh, so be on the lookout. Yeah, if, yeah. If you if you if you find the, the website and you're interested, then uh, join the subscriptions and you know download what is offered, and there'll be a, a, a small fee to be you know be paid for this, that, and the next thing, and all of that goes towards paying for the website and paying for the future publications and the republications of some of my books because they're out of print now you see the ones you you mentioned last week uh there you know you can still get the pdf but so there's something about reading a book you know in your hand it's uh, very very different so now you you mentioned uh, uh, uh something to me before we actually started this um uh, interview about uh, uh, Islamic seminary mm. and um, what what I would recommend is um, a couple of different things. Um, first of all, the the humanities should not be ignored. And um, mm -hmm. You Do know, you so social sciences in that, like psychology, yes, sociology. yes, yes, all of the soft sciences. Now, uh, you know, the humanities are not the soft; they're not the hard sciences, but they prepare you to handle the hard sciences in the correct way. You mm. see, uh, because the humanities, when you when you study the the art, you study uh, the history, you you study literature. Uh, you're gaining knowledge and you're you're able to enter into worlds that you cannot go to mm. okay which and, is different from the hard sciences because that kind of stays as data in a sense yeah that that right. stays as data we, that but stays as data the soft, but sciences, the soft sciences help you to apply that data you yeah. see and when you when you put that together with the uh, with the uh, theological perspective that is uh, available from uh, the Quran and the great masters in the past, you see, um, then you, you have a combination. I mean, what, what's being done at Zaituna College is going in the right direction, you see. But there's also another aspect that is being missed here. Uh, you know, and this has to do with the knowledge of the occult. It's not for everybody. Uh, but it but is we need for some people or a, a a a large number of people not not everybody but some of the scholarship should be aware of this yes well and, or for specialized example, for example um yeah let's just say well you you have a i i have developed a course okay a couple of courses that uh, cover occult history i would recommend that you apply these to all of your students who are passing through the seminary. It doesn't have to be a, a credit course, but it has to be one of these courses that is at least monitored. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because there's knowledge there that these gentlemen and ladies need to be aware of, that they mm -hmm. would not get anyplace else. The only people who are doing something like what I'm doing is uh, the only other person who's really doing is Mark Passio. Mark Passio is an ex-occultist like myself, but he was deeper into the satanic realm uh, than I was. I went in a different direction into esoteric Christianity, and um, that's a whole different matter than he went into actual practical Satanism. He came out of it, thank God, and he's brought his knowledge out of that, and he's made it into a practical course. So. Somebody like Mark Passio or someone like myself, our lectures would be very, very good for the seminarians uh, to experience. Now, you, I would make it mandatory for all of them, you see, and that at some point you're going to be able to, uh, to uh, identify those out of those group who are going to be seriously interested in pursuing, you know, maybe a graduate uh, approach. 
you see, to, to mm -hmm. this particular aspect, because what's needed in the Shura is someone who knows how the enemy operates. Yes. Every Shura needs this. Mm -hmm. Every leader needs someone like that in their midst. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, every king needed a magician, you see. <laughs> mm. uh, that's that's how it is. They had their magicians. Every court mm. had its jester, jester and a magician. Okay, mm. and uh, uh, that's that's just how the governance is. So um, Islam needs its mystics, but they have to be informed. Most mm. of your mystics have no idea how the occult is organized. That's right. They have no idea. Now I've laid it out pretty pretty clearly in the, the courses that I've been about 23, 24 hours of courses, coursework at lectures, okay? Oh, well, 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 and um, I, I would suggest that they be part of a seminary approach to that also includes um, uh, the humanities. Now it doesn't mean that people have to enter and immerse themselves in the humanities, but they should be aware of them. They should mm -hmm. be aware of great writers like Victor Hugo. Uh, mm. They should be aware of uh, great um, uh, thinkers and great governors from the past and, the, and how it is that they approach the solutions of their, uh, for, for, for their kingdoms, for their communities, how it is. Uh, you see, and mo most people don't know. Most people don't know, most students, almost everyone on the faculty and almost every student I came across when I was teaching for 10 years in Malaysia amongst Muslims, none of them, almost none of them knew why Genghis Khan had his sons destroyed Baghdad. They did not know the real reasons, mm. you see? So that's a great lack of knowledge. And when mm. you don't have that, see that when you learn that, it leads to uh, humility. Because the problem with the Baghdad caliphate at the time was arrogance and pride mm -hmm. yeah and get and genghis khan kublai khan made it very very clear to him when he marched in when he rode into the uh, uh masjid mm -hmm. and, and said look i'm the hammer of god that's right had you not had you not sinned had you not sinned against your god i would not be here mm -hmm. you see amazing so, words amazing words that's right so uh, and it was it was Genghis Khan who gave the order, and Genghis gave them three opportunities to correct their error, and they did not correct it. The last uh, the last time they sent his nephew head back to him in the basket, and he said that's and that was his favorite nephew. He loved that boy. Okay, so that was it. He said he's had enough. So and people did the alim didn't know these things. And the students, PhD students, didn't know these things. Well, I was just talking to a young man at a, uh, at a rifle competition here in Kentucky the other day. It was a 4-H mm. thing. And uh, um, we took um, uh, uh, our, our boy there. And um, the young man was asking me all kinds of questions. He's married, has one child, and second child's in the oven right now. And... I told him that people just don't understand because, and they don't understand how the evil is organized and they don't understand that the, because the, mis the education is misdirected. It's mm. purposely misdirected. The mm. fact that the Muslim uh, Alim and the students that I encountered did not know this about Genghis Khan in Baghdad shows that this uh, was particularly, specifically left out of their education. Hmm. Okay, so when you lose sight of history, and especially the history of your own people, you lose the soul of your people. And if you lose the soul of your people, you lose your relationship with Allah. Mm -hmm. There's a history. And the, the, the word starts, it, it's H-I-S. It's his story. It's mm. Allah's story. Mm. We're walking it out. Mm. You see? So um, when, you, when you miss out this kind of knowledge, how can you serve Allah? Mm. You can't. 
Yeah, and if you're not the, historically conscious where yeah. you're standing, where you came no. from, how we got here, then you're missing a lot, a lot. If you haven't read Ibn Khaldun, you know nothing. Mm. You know nothing of your religion. Yeah. You think you know, but you don't know because it's out of context. Mm. The whole thing's out of context, you see? And if you don't understand superstition, and if you don't know how evil infiltrates and then works and then misdirects and performs magic through mind control, you don't understand. You can't be the servant. You're lacking knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's no wonder that you, if you can't understand this, how can you understand your wife? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't. And if you can't understand your wife, how are you going to have relationship with Allah? He designed, he gave her to you so that you can understand him. So that you mm -hmm. two can communicate to, together and keep your mercy and your compassion and your love for each other and your affection for each other and mirror that which he has for you mm. with each other. If that's not there, then you have no religion. You have an idea of religion, but you don't, you're not capable of living it. And that's why my wife doesn't know any happily, happily married Muslim women. That's mm. why I've just mm. told you. I was shocked. I expected her to at least give me a handful. She didn't know any. Not one. Yeah, I mean, even even in the area that I live, and it's I don't want to give numbers out here. But yeah, it's right. not good. It's not good. So, in any case, uh, you need a lot know, of healing. When, so. when you, yeah, we we've, we've got a we've got a you know, it it'd be nice to to have a Muslim comedy show, <laughs> bring back some humor, and you right, know, exactly. make 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 fun of these uh, uh, situations you know it's one of the greatest um, uh, uh, joys uh, for me to was was to sitting down with my my mother and my father and watching all in the family and there you had there you had this new york couple you know stuck up in this apartment or and, and you know having all the typical problems of all the typical fa family problems and everyone laughing about it you know all of the emotions the gamuts running through there and you know we would sit there and we would talk about it hmm. and this that's what mama just did with you dad you know <laughs> no one it's this is not happening in the muslim community everybody's pretending this doesn't this problem doesn't exist mm. and it's a very serious problem this lack of joy in the home is a reflects itself in a lack of uh, joy in the street mm. uh, so um uh, i i hope that uh, that no answers very 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 important lessons about marriage and how marriage relates to our relationship with allah yes and then after that we started talking about uh the social sciences or the humanities you mentioned and and then with that you talked about being historically conscious that if you oh. don't know the history of your people you've lost your soul and well, you've uh, lost their, you've lost the soul of your people of your yeah. people yeah. yeah and if you don't know your history and that relates to the social sciences and and, and all and, and humanity and mm. human thinking and thought if you don't have that then uh, it, it's it's like I guess the, the spirit of critical thinking is lost in some way. Yes, you can't think critically and if you don't have these things and you can't think crit uh, critically, you cannot serve Allah, you cannot be his slave you only think that you're his slave, but you know, the, the, the slave of Allah uh, is the one who serves him not yourself and if you're serving your own ignorance, you're not serving Allah because he's all knowing. Mm. Okay? And uh, he, want, he taught Adam the name of everything. What do you know? You mm. see, what do you know? I, I know? I know kids are gonna walk through the woods and they can name the plants, you see? Mm. I, I know people, I, I knew people in Malaysia, in the, in the forest in, in Malaysia who could walk into the woods go find something, go find an animal and then bring it back and show it to me and then go and put it back safely, mm. you see? Uh, or who could go into the river and say, what do you want to eat? 
Dad, what do you want to eat for supper? Mm. And I say, oh, how about a fish this long? And they say, okay. And they dive into the river with this little homemade spear gun and bring it back. Mm. How many people you know can do that? Mm. Right? You know, you've got to have knowledge and skill and ability and will. Mm. You see, sitting around, you know, the mosque all the time, that's not going to get it for you. Yeah. Not going to get it for you. And you know, you 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 know as I as well as I do, we got all these people who want to go up and live in the mountain. They want to make their hijra. They ain't going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're just going to talk about it, but they don't have what it takes to actually do it. They don't have the will. They don't have the will. Okay. They talk about it, but they want somebody else to do it, and they'll kind of tag along. And uh, these kind of people, they're just. Uh, they're, they're, they're like an anchor or a ball and chain. Okay. Astaghfirullah. Yep. Oh. Okay. Thank you so much. Inshallah. You're welcome, Next dear Tuesday. brother. Inshallah. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, Inshallah. Okay. okay. Was As-salamu alaykum. Rahmatu Allahi wa barakatuh.